This video walks you through a typical business requirements document page by page to assist you in understanding why business requirements are the most critical element in the various steps in application development and also to understand the individual elements of a professionally developed BRD. The business sponsor and key stakeholders have a vision for the purpose and contents of an application. But often, since they are not IT people, they rarely have thought out all the elements that must be investigated to provide a complete picture of what will go into the application. The business requirements provide the vehicle to capture all of those elements. IT people meet with the project sponsor and ask a boatload of questions. IT must consider what will be included. Will the application be developed in phases? What interfaces must be applied? What are the inherent risks or issues confronting IT? And many more questions. The fill-in template we are using as a demo is available along with over 100 waterfall and agile forms and templates in the SDLC forms inventory. Let's step through the elements in a typical document starting with the cover page. What are the text elements that should appear on this page for ease of personnel to recognize what's in this document? What is the document title, the project name and version? Will it contain a confidentiality agreement to protect the company? And does it include the document number and sequential page numbering? The document will not be complete without a revision history so that the reader knows if they have the latest version of a document and what is the history of changes to the document. The copyright notice lets people know that they do not have the right to copy any of the information they are in and that all rights to the material are protected by this message. The table of contents allows people to quickly determine scope and volume of the document and find topics and subtopics of interest to them by clicking on that topic to move to the desired page. The purpose may be a few sentences or a lengthy justification for the project. The purpose should identify why the business unit wants the project, the goals, and what benefit will be derived. The project information will include major system functionality. The project description entails the vision, a high-level overview of the project, how will it work from the business's viewpoint, desktop, mobile, etc., what is the allocated budget for the project and a development timeline that may be critical for a go-no-go no go decision. The project approach generally describes how the project will be developed. Will it be developed as a single application or will it be developed in phases, etc.? Precisely define the business goals. The list of deliverables should identify a meaningful description of the deliverable and whether it is included or excluded from this phase of the project. The business driver should identify what motivated the business. Was it to reduce costs, meet regulatory demands, process improvement, etc.? Stakeholders should be identified by name, department, and their role in the project. Assumptions that were made insofar as to the project. Dependencies could be that another project must be completed before this project can be loaded into production. Constraints take many forms that can limit the project scope. Risk also take many forms. Each risk must be identified with the mitigation approach and any workaround or alternate plan. Sponsors will watch the costs like an eagle as the project progresses and vehemently challenge any cost increases. Target dates for deliverables are generally shown on a quarterly basis.
describe the current processes in order to readily differentiate between the current and proposed processes that you will also identify. The current processes should include the business workflow, any algorithms, decisions, validations, exception handling, user interactions, and when tasks are performed and what the expected results are. The current process flow should be fairly detailed depicting the data architecture including every element in the design. The current process description should explain how the entire process works. Describe the proposed processes highlighting differences between the existing and these proposed processes. As with how you define existing processes, the proposed processes should include the business workflow, any algorithms, decisions, validations, exception handling, user interactions, and when tasks are performed, what the expected results are. The proposed process flow should be fairly detailed depicting the data architecture including every element in the design. The proposed process's description should explain how the entire process works. This page is the crux of the document. It must be complete in all regards as it contains the information which is turned over to IT to commence programming. No detail is too small to omit regardless of the number of pages created to communicate this information. This list of business requirements forms the basis for development and testing. Without these requirements, how will quality assurance people know what to test? A system interface might be a database in which information is shared. System interfaces must address performance, capacity, security, transfer schedules, and identification of any documentation that will assist in programming these interfaces into the application. Infrastructure requirements identify hardware or software changes or additions normally under the responsibility of the infrastructure department. Examples of other requirements include user or server certificates, encryption and password rules, metrics for database records or transaction counts, who will support the application, constraints due to development tools, programming languages, architectural and design issues, and data retention requirements. Additional requirements that must be addressed are product usability, performance, and maintenance requirements. The content includes data and report requirements. This section should include sample copies of all content and data, examples of input and output files and their schema. Identify who will provide the information. Will the content be maintained on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis? Training may well be required for the user community, customers, and any support organizations. Documents should be developed to support those same organizations. We're now coming close to wrapping up the document. The glossary has already been started with critical terms in this fill-in template.